Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at evaluating a double integral. And the double integral is x plus y times e to the x squared minus y squared dA, where r, the region of integration, is bounded by the lines y equals x, uh, x minus y equals 2, uh, y equals negative x, or x minus y equals 0, and then x plus y equals 3. So this, uh, this region of integration is actually pretty complicated. If we tried to do a double integral, over this region, we would have to go from this line to this line, and then when we get to this x value, we go from this line to this line, and then when we get to this x value, we would go from this line to this line. So it would be a pretty nasty double uh, integral. We actually have three double integrals to add together. So that's not much fun. Um, what we actually want to do is make a change of variables um, in the right way to simplify this integrand. So when we made a u sub before, um, or we change the variables before, we kind of based it off the region of integration. So if it's like a circle, we would switch to polar coordinates. So here we have um, some things to notice. Uh, this first equation can be written as x minus y equals 0. So x minus y equals 0. And then the second equation is x minus y equals 2. The third equation can be written as x plus y equals 0. And the last equation can be written as x plus y equals 3. So an, maybe an appropriate substitution would be to say that u should be x plus y and v could be equal to x minus y. So maybe that's a good substitution to make. If that's the case, then we could say that u would go from 0 to 2. So that would be the case because this is a nice linear transformation. This um, is basically y equals x right here, and u would just increase this way from 0 to 2. Different values of u, we would have u going from 0 to 2. So different values of u would be different lines. So in this case, u is increasing this way perpendicular to this line. So u would go from 0 to 2. v would go from 0, whoops, u is 3, sorry. All right, so u um, would go from this line, y equals negative x, um, and different values of the constant for the x plus y, y equals, or u equals 0 is this line, u equals 1, u equals 2, u equals 3. So this is the direction of increasing u, so u actually goes from 0 to 3 continuously. So u goes from 0 to 3. And v goes from this line. This is the line v equals 0. So let's just make a note here. This is v equals 0. This is v equals 2. So v ranges from 0 to 2. As you change those right-hand sides of that line, you get different lines. And this is the line v equals 0. This is the line v equals 2. All right, so those are our bounds. Now what we need is the Jacobian. Once we have the Jacobian, then we can plug in, this becomes u, this becomes e to the, well, we have to deal with that in a minute, um, but it's actually going to be u times v when we factor the difference of two squares. So now we need the Jacobian. So partial xy, partial uv, is actually going to be related to partial uv, partial xy. So I take the partial with respect to um, x, so u sub x, u sub y, v sub x, and v sub y. So I take this determinant, and now partial u partial x is 1, partial u partial y is 1, partial v partial x is 1, partial v partial y is negative 1. So this determinant is going to be negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. Now, we don't want that Jacobian. We want the reciprocal Jacobian, or the Jacobian of the inverse transformation. And if this transformation is a one-to-one -one transformation, or what we mean by invertible, then uh, the reciprocal relationship holds. So partial xy, partial uv, is actually equal to 1 over 
the Jacobian we just found, partial uv, partial xy. So that's going to be negative one half. So our Jacobian is negative one half. Our bounds, our u goes from zero to three, v goes from zero to two. And now all we need to do is change our integrand to be in terms of u and v. All right, so let's look at our integrand. Our integrand, let's see, we said u is going to range from zero to three. V is going to range from 0 to 2. Now let's just make a note. We said that u was going to be x plus y and v was going to be x minus y. So uh, this is going to be u e to the, let's see, x squared minus y squared is x plus y times x minus y. So really just uv in the exponent and then multiply by the absolute value of negative one-half du dv. So this is going to equal the integral from, let's see, if I do v first actually, um, this is going to be easier. So let me do v first. Integral from 0 to 2, integral from 0 to 3, u e to the u v dv du. Let me pull the one-half out front. Now if you integrate with respect to v, treat u like a constant, that means I have to divide by u, so that's going to go away actually. So this is going to be 1 half integral 0 to 2 times e to the u v from v equals 0 to v equals 3. Let's see, I think I got these bounds backwards. This should be a 2 for v and a 3 for u. So this was actually already set up the right way. So dv du. Yeah, so um, this is a 3. So v is ranging from 0 to 2. And then du. So this is going to equal 1 half the integral from 0 to 3 e to the 2u minus 1 du. And just integrate that. Uh, with respect to u, we get 1 half times uh, 1 half e to the 2u minus u from 0 to 3. And we plug in those bounds. We get 1 half times 1 half e to the 6 minus 1 minus 3 minus zero, and that reduces down to one quarter times e to the sixth minus one quarter is 13 over four. And that is our solution.